welcome to this tutorial on Motion 5, Building from Scratch. We're going to build a lower third graphic with some design elements that Motion 5 offers. First we're opening up Motion and you're going to see the project browser front and center. And Motion offers a couple different template files that you could use and um, other presets. But what we're going to do is start with a blank preset. It'll be a motion project. Uh, broadcast HD 1080. We'll say open. And then motion opens up with a file browser on the left hand side of the screen. And we're going to use the file browser and some of the installed subfolders that come with the Mac operating system and when you install motion. So within the movies folder, we have Final Cut projects and some motion templates subfolders. So I'm going to go into the motion templates subfolder and then I like to use the compositions folder and I've made a subfolder in there called thirds and I'm going to make a new folder in here where I'll put all the media for this project. And if you single click three separate times we're going to name this folder with the date first so 2012 4 1 Happy April Fool's Day and basic motion third. And then what we're going to do is save the untitled motion project file in that folder. So file save as. And that was in movies, motion templates, comps, thirds. And there's the folder I just made. And same thing 2012, 4, 1. Basic motion third. So now I've named my project. And the first thing I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about this right menu here. Um, right now we're showing overlays, but you can't see them because we're kind of zoomed in. And we're showing the rulers, which we'll talk about later. I just turned on the grid. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to zoom out. So zooming out to fit to window is shift Z and now you're going to see our overlays also zooming in and out is command plus and minus so here's minus and plus and what we're going to do is start with some text so I'm going to click the text tool and click inside the title safe zone I'm just going to type my name and the fonts already set to something that I, I use fairly often. Uh, it's very similar to the font that they use in the motion interface, if not the same font. Um, if you look into the inspector, it'll show you the currently selected objects property. So I'm looking at Helvetica New, and then this is the light version, and I'm going to change the size and drag it up a little bit. And the next thing I'm going to do is select the transform tool and now the transform tool shows you some object properties so if I go into the properties of this object and use these little handles I can change and it's changing it's showing you showing you that you change some scale um, you can click and drag around or you could even click and drag in here to move or scale or change the properties but we're going to undo all that undo is command Z very useful key command also saving Redo is command shift Z. Saving is command S, so you should probably save often. So I just saved what I've done. So um, with this arrow tool, I can also nudge command, and the arrow keys will nudge the selected objects. So I can select in this layers area and nudge up and down or left and right. So I'm going to move this right into the safe zone. And the next thing I'm going to do is use a line element. So if I click and hold in here, we see rectangle circle line. I'm going to draw a line from the side of the screen and kind of underline the graphic that I just made and try to make this straight or hold shift and that'll hold it and constrain it to being straight. Okay, so there's our line and I'm going to go into the inspector shape properties and I'm going to turn off outline and it'll disappear and I'm going to turn on fill and now it's set to a color so this is a white line that's one pixel and I'm actually going to make this a gradient and I'm going to change my gradient hit the down arrow here now this gradient box is uh, useful for 
developing a style to the gradient. Uh, the top bar is your opacity, the bottom bar is your color. So to trash some of these colors you click and drag off and I just want it to be one solid color and I'm going to make it white. So you click into the color window and then change the color wheel and slider. And then the top window you can add new colors or opacity handles by clicking on the bar. So I want it to start at white and then transition to see-through or 0% opacity. So if you look in the timeline you're starting to see command question mark will hide the um, overlays. So now that our overlays are hidden you can kind of see what's going on but first it's not really changing anything yet because I have to set up my start and end points and this is where the rulers come into play. So view rulers and if I select my object again Oh, show my, if I show my overlays now I'll see the ruler is in the top and sidebar here and this is showing you how many pixels you have to work with. So um, it's set up in a grid where zero is right in the center and uh, we would like this gradient to go from negative a thousand to a thousand just fully across the screen negative to an end point of a thousand and I'm going to hide my overlays again and you'll see that the gradient fades now so starting at white and fading out I'm going to nudge this line, I'm going to select the object, and I know that my line is selected, and command up and left, and now it's falling off the screen and underlining the name. And if I wanted to show my overlays, you can see that there's the object in the title safe zone. So the next thing I want to do is create a little shine, kind of like a little sparkle that happens underneath and uh, runs across from one direction to another. So what I'm going to do is draw a circle. I'm going to hide my overlays and I'm going to hide the text layer and I'm going to draw it as best I can right on this line. So it's kind of large right now and what I want to do is fade it a bit so I will go into the shape and style properties and I'm going to feather this in so in a negative direction so right now negative 45 and fall off I'm going to crank that up so that it kind of falls off inward and uh, I also need to move this a little bit so command I'm going to select the transform tool and command down will center that up okay so it's, it's actually slightly too large still try feathering it a bit more that looks good okay so turning my text layer back on you see a slight highlight underneath the front of the name and what I want it to do is move from left to right so I'm going to use something in the library called a behavior so if you click into the behaviors you can go into basic motion or if the, you go to the bottom you can use the search tool and type in move or just click to move so we'll select move and now I can apply that to my currently selected layer so it's going to go to the circle I'll click apply and right now it's going to, if I show the overlays, command question mark it's going to move where this transform handle is so if I hit the space bar, and this is the first time we're playing anything in time you can see the time bar is moving across the timeline and this object is moving towards this little handle, so I'm going to hit the space bar again or stop playback and what I want to do is move where this is moving to. So you can see that this is going to move to wherever this transform handle is located. So I'm going to hide my overlays again just to see if I'm online. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit more. And now it looks like it's moving to that move handle and it'll stop there. I actually want this to go a little bit further down the line so I'm going to drag this over and that's where it'll end its movement. Now if I want this to happen faster I can drag how long the movement occurs back in time and now it should happen over just this duration. 
Okay. So now that I have this moving, if I turn it off and play it back, this is what the effect looks like if I drag it from the front. It moves across and there's a little shine highlight. Now the next thing I want to do is fade this out. I want it to start and fade in and fade out at the end. So what I would do is go into my behaviors and not the move behavior. I'm going to go into all and type in fade. And I'm going to select the fade in, fade out behavior. So it'll fade in and fade out. And I'm going to click apply. And I want to select the object I want to apply it to. So the circle layer, apply. Now it will fade in at the beginning and at the end it's going to fade out. But I'm going to adjust the timing. So I'll take this and drag this back. Now if I hit the space bar, it'll fade in and fade out at the end there. And it it's popping up back in because the circle object stays on the timeline for a little bit too long and I'll have to drag that back and adjust it so that it meets the end of the fade and now it's no longer appearing in time. So I've just created a quick little shine that appears and disappears and moves. And what I want to do is move this circle back a little bit. So if I turn on my overlays again, I want the start point to be a little bit further to the left. So if I grab the center of this object, I can drag it over. And note that the line, the red line, is showing you the movement path. So if I turn these off, it'll fade in, shoot under, and then fade out. So that's just a quick little line and lower third that uh, can highlight something on your screen. It's an interesting design element. So it's showing a line that goes across the screen. The next thing I want to do is, is make this stand out with a, a little bit of separation with a color bar that goes across and underneath in, in the layers. So what I'm going to do is go into the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box all the way across the screen. Now this box is on top of all the other layers so I'll need to drag it to the bottom of the other layers in order to, well, let's change the color so we can see what's going on. If I go into the inspector for this object and command question mark will bring up the overlays and I will select the object to know that I'm currently modifying that object. I'm going to go into the style of the shape and I'm going to change it into a gradient. So we no longer have a white object and now the white text will stand out if I drag this to the bottom. Note where the handle is, it's showing you where it's going to place it within the group. Uh, I can now see my line and my text on the screen. And I'm going to change this gradient, so I'm going to click the down arrow and I'm going to change this to a, an all blue gradient, so I'll trash this and I'm going to leave the color the same but leave some space at the top in the middle and in the bottom with the opacity handles. So if I click and make some opacity handles I can take the middle handle and drop the opacity so I can see my white graphic that I've made and I have to set where I want it so if I drag this opacity handle down a little bit if, if you mistakenly make one you can click and drag it off and I'm going to change where the gradient falls this is going to fall off of the gradient and I'm going to also I'll make a couple more handles and make the outside handles at zero opacity so now I have a couple faded bars on my screen and I'm just adjusting where the fades occur Okay, so if I hit command and the question mark, we can see that the line is kind of sitting through that graphic a little bit. And I might have to make some slight adjustments. And maybe even bring some of the opacity back. 
So it just kind of fades a little bit. And now we'll, we'll play back from the top. Note that the, the blue bar disappeared here. It's because wherever the time bar is located, that's where you're going to be making the object if you were to click the text tool or click the rectangle tool that's where the object will appear in time so if you need to fix that you can take that layer and drag it to the front and we're also going to drag it so that it is at the duration of our sequence which was set to 10 seconds at the very beginning when we made our new project file and now if I click and drag to the front of the timeline or I can go to start and hit the spacebar. We'll see that the little shine graphic comes in and fades across. So that's a little bit about gradients and some of the behaviors on the screen. Um, you can also apply behaviors to text. So I'm going to select this text layer and go into my library. And they have specific behaviors for text. So if I click into behaviors and then text sequence, Actually, I'm going to get rid of my search uh, behaviors and then text sequence will give you a number of options. I like very basic behaviors and I'm going to fade lines in. So if I apply this to my text object, note that fade lines in happens on this object and what will happen is that over that duration the line will fade in. I want this to happen faster, so I'm going to drag this back. So it's almost immediate. Quick pop fade in. And I'm also going to fade the lines out at the end. Quick apply. I'll have to drag this to the end. It put it wherever the time bar was located. Actually, it put it at the very beginning, and I had to make my adjustment. Now it'll fade out. I'm also going to fade the whole group out. So this is one of the more powerful options in motion. You can sort layers within groups and make multiple groups. So I can fade this whole layer out if I apply behavior to the group. So I'm going to select the group and then I'm going to go back to all. And I'm going to type in fade and I want this to fade in and fade out at the end. So if I apply this now this whole group will fade in and then all the way at the end it's going to fade out it's just a very simple lower third graphic where we've applied some behaviors to different objects that we've created and we've adjusted some of the objects